Alright, we're starting a new text today. A Modest Proposal by Jonathan Swift. Uh, Alright, and I'm... Um, I've read this before, and I've seen it, but yeah, it's, it's a good text, if I recall. Actually, did I read it, or did I just hear about it? I think I read it, yeah. Alright, a Modest Proposal. For preventing the children of poor people in Ireland from bringing a burden on their parents or country, and for making them beneficial to the public. You know what? Now when I just think about it, it feels relevant for today. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Modest proposal. I think it, it'll be more relevant than maybe I first believed. We'll see, we'll see. All right. It is a melancholy object to those who walk through this great town or travel in the country when they see the streets, the roads, and the cabin doors crowded with beggars of the female sex. Oh? Only female beggars, eh? Hmm. Followed by three, four, or six children, all in rags, and importuning every passenger for an alms. All right, all right. It's about the children, exactly. You see a mother, the mothers with all their children begging. Uh, what would the objectivist call them? The feeders. The eaters. No, not the feeders. The eaters. No. These mothers, instead of being able to work for their honest livelihood, are forced to employ all their time in strolling to beg sustenance for their helpless infants, who, as they grow up, either turn thieves for want of work or leave their dear native country to fight for the pretender in Spain or sell themselves to the Barbados. Yeah, they don't have the time, eh? I think it is agreed in all by all parties that this prodigious number of children in the arms or on the backs or at the heels of their mothers and frequently of their fathers uh, is in the present is in the present deplorable state of the kingdom. A very great additional grievance, and therefore whoever could find um, a fair, cheap, and easy method of making these children sound and useful member of the Commonwealth, would deserve so well of the public, as to have this statue set up for a preserver of the nation. Wait. All right, there's a deplorable state. Uh, all right, and whoever could... Fi ah, there we go. Whoever could figure out what to do with the children. There we go. I missed that. All right. Whoever can figure this stuff out, they should get a statue. Yeah. Preserver of the nation. Yeah. That's that's what he wants to be, Jonathan Swift. A preserver of the nation. All right. But my intention is very far from being confined to provide only for the children of the professed beggars. It is of a much greater extent and shall take in the whole number of infant, infants as a certain age, who are born of parents in effect as little able to support them, as those who demand our charity in the streets. Alright, you want to provide for all the children, not only the beggars, yeah. Provide for everybody, yeah. Right. As to my own part, having turned my thoughts for many years upon this important subject and maturely weighed, weighed the several schemes of our project, projectors, I've always found them grossly mistaken in their computation. It is true, a child just dropped from its dam <laughs> may be supported by her milk for a solar year with little other nourishment. 
at most um, not above the value of two shillings, which the mother may certainly get, or the value in scrapes by her lawful occupation of begging. And it is exactly at one year old that I propose to provide for them in such a manner as, instead of being at charge upon their parents, or the parish, or wanting food and raiment for the rest of their lives, they shall, on the contrary, contribute to the feeding and partly to the clothing of many thousands. Oh, clothing as well. Yeah, of course. Let's not waste. Ah, let's not waste indeed. There is likewise another great advantage in my scheme, that it will prevent those voluntary abortions and that horrid practice of women murdering their bastard children. Alas, too frequent among us, sa sacrificing the poor innocent babes. I doubt more to avoid. Wait, I doubt more to avoid the expense than the shame which would move tears and pity in the most savage and inhuman breast. Yeah, it's not about shame, it's about... Yeah. Starvation and... Expense, yeah? Ooh, uh. Sacrificing the points, the babes. That doesn't surprise me at all, right? That actually... Still happens today, maybe not as much for the hunger, but it's more as a little bit the shame, but also right the um, responsibility. Right, I can take this responsibility, and people just leave the babies wherever. The number of souls in this kingdom being usually reckoned one million and a half. Of these I, I calculate there may be about 200,000 couple whose wives are breeders. Yeah, breeders. From which number I subtract 30,000 couple who are able to maintain their own children. Although I apprehend there cannot be be so many under the present distress of the kingdom. But this being granted, there will remain a hundred and seventy thousand breeders. I again sub subtract fifty thousand for those women who miscarry or those children that die by accident or disease within the year. There only remains a hundred and twenty thousand children of poor parents annually born. The question, therefore, is how this number shall be reared and provided for. Yeah, how will this work? Which, as I have already said, under the present situation of affairs, is utterly impossible by all methods hitherto proposed. For we can neither employ them in handicraft or agriculture. They neither build houses, I mean in the country, nor cultivate land. They can very seldom pick up livelihood by stealing till they arrive at six years old. Except where they are of twirdly parts, although I confess they learn their rudiments much earlier. During which time they can, however, be properly looked upon as probationers. As I have been informed by principal gentlemen in the country of Cavan, who protested to me that he never knew about above one or two instances under the age of six, even in a part of the kingdom so renowned for the quickest proficiency in that art. All right. Six years old, something like that. That is when you start working, eh? Holy shit. How long ago was this? 17 something? 1720? 1750? Somewhere in between that. That time we were talking about children working at six, eh? That doesn't really happen in Sweden anymore. It happens in other parts of the world, so world I guess, still. 
I suppose you start school at six and that is working. So that still happens in Sweden, yeah. We are put to work. I am assured by our merchants that a boy or a girl before 12 years old is no saleable commodity. And even when they come to... Alright, slavery was a thing. Alright, and even when they come to this age, they will not yield above three pounds or three pounds and a half crown at most on the exchange. Which cannot uh, turn to account either to the parents or kingdom. The charge of nutri nutrients and rags having been at least four times that value. Alright, right, right. Before 12, they are just a burden on society, yeah. Right, you can put them to work at six, but they don't really, right? That work is not super valuable. Is that what they're saying? It takes too much work because you still have to... Even if you put them to work, they cannot fend for themselves, so someone has to be in charge of them. After 12, however, they can be slaves and they can just obey. That's all right, sure. I mean, this age stuff kind of makes sense to me, yeah? I shall now therefore humbly propose my own thoughts, which I hope will not be liable to the least objection. All right, here we go. I've been assured by a very knowing American of my acquaintance in London, in London that a young healthy child well nursed is at a year old a most delicious nourishing and wholesome food whether stewed, roasted, baked, or boiled. And I make no doubt that it will equally serve in a fricassee or a ragoust. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Boom. Bomb drop, eh? I do therefore humbly offer it to the public consideration that of the 120,000 children already computed, 20,000 may be reserved for breed, whereof only one-fourth part to be males. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is more than we allow to sheep, black cattle, or swine. And my reason is that these children are seldom the fruits of marriage, a circum uh, circumstance not much regarded by our savages. Therefore, one male will be sufficient to serve four females. That uh, the remaining hundred thousand may, at a year old, be offered in sale to the persons of quality and fortune through the kingdom, always adv advising the mother to let them suck plentifully in the last month, so as to render them plump and fat for a good table. A child will make two dishes at an entertainment for friends, and when the family dines alone, the force or hindquarter will make a reasonable dish, and seasoned with a little pepper or salt will be very good boiled on the fourth day, especially in winter. Oh man. You know what? This text, I think, is a very good response to objectivism. Yeah. Talking about breeders and the eaters. Pointless people to society. Yeah, I mean, they're not helping, are they? So we might as well make them a valued member of society. Yeah, it still feel relevant, even though the situation we're in, right? They're just talking about... But this is like, you can replace these children with any unwanted, like any beggar, right? Any beggar, any... What's that called? Unemployed person. Ah. And the elderly, right? The elderly doesn't provide anything to the society, they just... They just, yeah, they, hmm. too old, can't help. All right. I have reckoned upon a medium that a child 
just born will weigh 12 pounds, and in a solar year, if tolerably nursed, increases to 28 pounds. I grant this food will be somewhat dear, and therefore very proper for landlords, who, as they have already devoured most of the parents, nice, seem to have uh, the best title to the children. I mean, a little bit on the nose, but fine, yeah. Infant's flesh will be this in the season throughout the year, but more plentiful in March and a little before and after, for we are told by a grave author that an eminent French physician that fish being prolific, uh, being a prolific diet, there are more children born in Roman Catholic countries about nine months after Lent than any other season. Therefore, reckoning a year after the Lent, the markets will be more glutted than usual, becoming the number of popish infants is at least three to one in this kingdom, and therefore it will have one other collateral advantage by lessening the number of papists among us. I've already computed the charge of nursing a beg beggar's child in which list I reckon all cottagers, laborers, and four fifths uh, of the farmers to be about two shilling per annum, uh, rags included. And I believe no gentleman would repine to give ten shillings for the carcass of a good fat child, which, as I've said, will make four dishes of excellent. Uh, nutritive meat when he hath only some particular friend or his own family to dine with him. Thus the squire will learn to be a good landlord and gr grow popular among his tenants. The mother will have eight shillings neat profit and will be fit for work till she produces another child. Right. right. The child no longer has to take the responsibility. She can start working. Nice. Yeah. And then landlord, of course he will grow popular because he will make people will not be hungry. Yeah. More food. More work, yeah. Those who are more thrifty, as I must confess the times require, may flay the car carcass. The skin of which artificially dressed will make admirable gloves for ladies and summer boots for fine gentlemen. Oh man. Oh man. Alright, I think I was I was considering like I was trying to keep a straight face throughout the thing, but oh man. This is rough. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit nauseous. All right, as our city of Dublin, shambles may be appointed for this purpose. In the most convenient parts of it, and the butchers, we may be assured, will not be wanting. Although I rather recommend buying the children alive. <laughs> and dressing them hot from the knives as knife as we do roasting pigs. All right, a very worthy person, a true lover of his country and whose virtues I highly esteem was lately pleased in discoursing on this matter to offer a refined upon my scheme, right refinement upon my scheme. He said that many gentlemen of this kingdom ha having of late destroyed their deer. He con conceived that the want of venison might be well supplied by the bodies of young lads and maids, not exceeding fourteen years of age, not under twelve. So great a number of both sexes in every county being now ready to starve for want of work and service, and these to be disposed of by their parents if alive, or otherwise by their nearest relations. All right, but uh, with due difference, but with due difference to 
So excellent a friend, and so deserving a patriot, I cannot be altogether in his sent sentiments. For as to the males, my American acquaintance assured me from frequent experience that their flesh was generally tough and lean, like that of our schoolboys, by continual exercise, and their taste disagreeable, and to fatten them would not answer the charge. All right. Then, as to the females, it would, I think, with humble submission, be a loss to the public, because they soon would become breeders themselves, and besides, it is not improbable that some scrupulous people might be apt to censure such practice, although indeed very unjustly, as a little bordering upon cruelty, which I confess hath always been uh, with me the strongest objection against any project, how well soever in intended. All right. All right. But in order to justify my... F uh, Justify, my friend, he confessed that his expedient was put into his head by the famous Psalmanazor, a native of the islands Farmosa, who came from thence to London above twenty years ago, and in conversation told my friend that in his country, when any young person happened to be put to death, the executioner sold the carcass to persons of quality as a prime dainty. And that, in his time, the body of a plump girl of fifteen, who was crucified for an attempt to poison the emperor, was sold to his imperial majesty's prime minister of state and other great uh, mandarins of the court, in joints from the giblet, gibbet, at four hundred crowns. Neither, indeed, can I deny that... If the same use were made of several plump young girls in this town, who without one single growth to their fortune cannot stir abroad with without a chair and appear at a pl appear, appear at a playhouse and assemblies in foreign fineries which they never will pay for, the kingdom would not be the worst. All right, I didn't really follow along, but right, some some plump fifteen-year-old girls will not really be of help and might as well be eaten, eh? All right. All right. Some persons of a desponding spirit are in great concern about that vast number of poor people who are aged, deceased, or maimed. And I have been desired to employ my thoughts what what course might be taken, and yeah, the elderly as well, yeah, to ease the nation of so many grievous encumbrance. Right. But I am not in the least. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Deep breaths. But I am not in the least upon that matter because it is very well known that they are very that they are every day dying and r rotting by cold and famine and filth and vermin as fast as can be reasonably expected and as to the young laborers they are now in almost mm. as hopeful condition they cannot get work and consequently pine away from want of nourishment to a degree that if any, if at any time they are accidentally hired to a common labor, they have not strength to perform it. And thus the country and themselves are happily delivered from the evils to come. All right, mercy killings, mercy killings. Something that I this made me think of was the previous. The previous text I was reading about the Neo-Luddites, right? The traditionalists. This text really makes me think of the traditionalists, right? Thinking about, oh... How it was better in the, in the olden days, right? It was better before, right? Just go back to the traditions, the old traditions. Yeah. 
people were much happier then. We had m much better lives. And right, all this progress is bad for humanity and our communities. Like, if you don't think about the, the politics of this one and you just think of what is the world that they are describing. It is a more traditional world than the one we have today and I'm just I'm just I'm just saying that this doesn't seem like where I want our society to go back to. Yeah. Great example. And I guess yeah, it's anecdotal, right? It's a one point in history. I mean, the tra traditionalists can go further back or not as far back and still So it's it's a bit of a straw man, but but still, but still in general, stuff is better now than they used to be, in my opinion. Alright, I have too, too long digressed, and therefore I shall return to my subject. The children. Yeah. I think the advantages by the proposal which I have made are obvious. Yeah, kind of obvious, yeah? And many. As well as the high of the highest importance. I don't know if they are important, but yeah. I don't know what a papist is, but all right. For first, as I have already observed, it would be... Oh. Mm, sorry. Mm. It would greatly lessen the number of papists, with whom we are yearly overrun, being the principal breeders of the nation, as well as their, our most dangerous enemies. All right, papists, it's... All right, some sort of group that breeds more. I've heard that argument today, right? <laughs> They're not about papists, right? They argued that the Muslims, they are breeders. They're breeding more than anyone, and they are the enemy. I've heard a similar argument, so yeah. That, that would probably be the modern equivalent of the papist. Right, and who stay at home on, on purpose with a design to deliver the kingdom to the pretender, hoping to take their advantage by the absence of so many good Protestants who have chosen rather to leave their country than to stay at home and pay tithes against their conscience to an Episcop Episcopal curate. All right. Secondly, the poorer tenants will have uh, something valuable of their own which by law m may be made liable to uh, distress and help to pay their landlord's rent, their corn and cattle being already seized and money a thing unknown. Oh man, the sentences are long, aren't they? Thirdly, whereas the main maintenance of a hundred thousand children from two two years old and upward, cannot be computed at less than 10 shillings apiece per annum, and the nation's stock will be uh, thereby increased by 50,000 pounds per annum. Besides the profit for a new dish, introduced to the tables of all gentlemen of fortune in the kingdom, who have any refinement in taste. Yeah, the sentences are way too long. Right. And the money will circulate among ourselves, the goods being entirely of our own growth and manufacture. Fourthly, the constant breeders, besides the grain of eight shillings sterling per annum, by the sale of their children will be rid of the charge of maintaining them after the first year. Yeah. A lot of arguments for. I wonder where that when the arguments against. I'm assuming that this text, how it is written, there will be no arguments against. Yeah, no arguments against. I can't imagine any arguments against. Fifthly, this food would likewise bring great custom to taverns where the vintners will certainly be so prudent as to procure the best recipes for dressing it to perfection and consequently have their houses frequented by all the fine gentlemen who justly value themselves upon their knowledge in good eating, and skillful cook who 
understands how to oblige his guests will contrive to make it as expensive as they please. Sixthly, this would be a great inducement to marriage, which all wise nations have either encouraged by rewards or enforcement by laws and penalties. It would increase the care and tenderness of mothers toward their children when they were sure of a settlement for life to the poor babies, provided in some sort to the public their annual profit instead of expense. Mmm, yeah. We should soon see an honest emulation among the married women, which of them could bring the fattest children to market. Yeah, I think like condoms and stuff is probably a good stopper of this. Ah, condoms and education. A way to deal with starving children. Yeah. Men would become as fond of their wives during the time of their pregnancy as they are now of their mares in foal, their cows and calf, their sow or sows when they are ready to farrow, nor offer a beat or a kick to them, as is too frequent a practice, for fear of a miscarriage. Yeah, men would would value their children, yeah. Oh, that's rough. Many other advantages might be enumerated. For instance, the addition of some thousand carcass carcasses in our exportation of barreled beef, the propagation of swine's flesh, and improvement of the art of making good bacon. So much wanting wanted among us by the great destruction of pigs to frequent our tables. Oh, I love bacon which are no way comparable in taste or magnificent to a well-grown fat yearling child, which roasted hull will make a considerable figure at a lord's mayor's feast or at any other public entertainment. But this and many others I omit being studious of brevity. Yeah, yeah. yeah I omit all of these arguments that I just made. No, no, many more, right, like these and others. All right. Supposing that 1,000 families in the city would be constant customers for infant's flesh, besides others who might have it at merry meetings, particularly at weddings and christenings, I compute that Dublin would take off annually about 20,000 carcasses, and the rest of the kingdom where probably they will be sold somewhat cheaper, the remaining 80,000. I can think of no, of no objection yeah, that will possibly be raised against this proposal, unless it should be urged that the number of people will be thereby much lessened in the kingdom. All right, here comes the... Yeah, so some counter-arguments. None of the... The obvious ones, though, yeah. All right, the kingdom will be weaker. This I freely own, and was indeed one principal design in offering to the world. I desire the reader to observe that I calculate my remedy for this one individual kingdom of Ireland, and for no other than it ever was, is, or I think can ever be upon the earth. Is it is he saying that overpopulation is this an overpopulation argument? Kind of seems that way, right? Well, it's popular today, right? People talking about overpopulation. So one solution to that is eat the babies. Yeah, eat all the babies. All right. Therefore, let no man Talk to me of other expedients, of taxes, taxing our absentees at five shillings a pound, of us neither clothes nor household furniture, right, nor household furniture, except what is of our own growth and manufacture, of utterly rejecting the materials and instruments that promote foreign luxury, of curing the exp expensiveness of pride, vanity, idleness, and gaming in our women, women, 
of introducing a vain parsimony, prudence, and temperance, of learning to love our country wherein we differ, uh, wherein we differ even from the Laplanders. Oh, that's that's us, I think. And the inhabitants of Top Topimanbu, of quitting our animosities and factions, nor acting any longer like the Jews who were murdering one another at the very moment their city was taken. Of being a little cautious not to sell our country and consciences for nothing. Of teaching landlords to have at least one degree of mercy towards their tenants. Lastly, of putting a spirit of honesty, industry and skill into our shopkeepers who, if a if a resolution could not be taken to buy uh, only our native goods, would immediately, immediately unite to cheat and exact upon us the price, the measure, and the goodness. Nor could ever yet be brought to make one fair proposal of just dealing, though often and earnestly invited to it. Oh man, I wasn't paying attention to the language at all. Oh, right, right, right. It, it is about lessening the strength of the Irish, Irish culture. Yeah. Lesser Irish would lessen the Irish culture and strength. But his counter is like, oh, what about all these people who export culture from outside? Is, is that the counter argument? It, so it was not a overpopulation argument. It is for the strength of the Irish. We should not lessen the amount of Irish people. And he's arguing that all these things do that more. Right, here we go. Therefore, I repeat. Okay, let's see. Therefore, I repeat. Let no man talk to me of these and the like expedients till he hath at least some glimpse of hope that there will be some hearty and sincere attempt to put them into practice. All right, so it's kind of, yeah, if you can't show me all this stuff, right, then it doesn't matter. But as to myself, having been wearied out of many years with offering vain, idle, visionary thoughts, and at length utterly despairing of success, I fortunately fell upon this proposal, which, as it is wholly new, so it has something solid and real, of no expense and little trouble, full in our own power, and whereby we can incur no danger of disobliging England." All right, it's purely Irish. Yeah, this thing, it's purely Irish. For this kind of commodity will not bear export exportation, and flesh being too tender uh, a consistence to admit a long conten continuance in salt, although perhaps I could name a country which would be glad to eat up our whole nation without it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bear, right. Yeah, it cannot be exported, right, without using a lot of salt. But maybe, maybe we could export it. To, I don't know, some country that would be happy to eat us up. I, yeah. Some nation, yeah. After all, I am not so violently bent upon on my own opinion, as to reject any offer proposed by wise men, which shall be found equally innocent, cheap, easy, and effectual. All right. But before something of that kind shall be advanced in contradiction to my scheme and offering to a better, I desire the author or authors will be pleased maturely to consider two points. All right. 
first, as things now stand, how they will be able to find food and raiment for a hundred thousand useless mouths and backs. And secondly, there being around a million of creatures in humane figure throughout this kingdom whose whole sustenance put into a common stock would leave them in debt of two million of pounds of sterling, adding those who are beggars by profession to the bulk of farmers, cottagers and laborers, with their wives and children who are beggars in effect. I desire those politicians who dislike my overture and may perhaps be so bold to attempt an answer that they will first ask the parents of these mortals whether they would not at this day think it a great happiness to have been sold for food at a year old in the manner that I prescribe, and thereby have avoided such perpetual scene of misfortunes, as they have... Uh, since gone through, by the oppression of landlords, the impossibility of paying rent without money or trade, the want of common sustenance, with neither house nor clothes to cover them from the inclemencies of the weather, and the most inevitable prospect of entailing the like or greater miseries upon their breed forever. Holy shit, the sentences are long. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, ask them. Would you not have preferred not to have lived your life? All right. If your life was one of suffering, would you have preferred not to have lived it? I profess in the sincerity of my heart that I have not the least personal interest in endeavoring to promote this necessary work, having no other motive than the public good of my country. By advancing our trade, providing for infants, relieving the poor, and giving some pleasure to the rich. I have no children, by which I can propose to get a single penny, the youngest being nine years old and my wife past childbearing. <laughs> I like that ending, yeah. I definitely like that ending, right? I just want the public good, right? I cannot benefit from this proposal, right? My wife cannot have children anymore, so I can't benefit from this. So it's just for the public good. I love that, yeah. Oof. What's this? All right, yeah. I thought it was going to be longer. That was a modest proposal. And I actually, I think you can translate. You can translate this to similar, like, as a response to similar arguments today. Like I said at the start. Yeah, right. The poor starving people could just be the unemployed people, the burdens to society, right? Anyone who argues burdens to society, this this is a good good response to people who wants to deal with the burdens of society. The beggars, the unemployed. I mean, I haven't heard a lot of people complaining about the children, but yeah, the elderly... The sick, the weak. This is the way to deal with that problem. When you see it, right? So what is the actual argument against this, right? It turns my stomach. Is that... Is that enough? Why does it, like, if we try to formalize an argument against the modest proposal, what would that look like? I mean, one thing that, like, doesn't make sense in the text. But I guess that is kind of... 
it is in our current day, right? Not a lot of parents the the these days have to like get rid of their children. Just get rid of them. That doesn't happen as often. Not not where I'm from anyway, in my culture, in my politics. So the argument that women are well parents are happy to get rid their children at one years of age that f falls flat and that's not what parents want to see and i'm pretty sure that parents even back then 1729 even back then i think the parents rid their children i don't think they're they are happy to get rid of them yeah i think it's it's a sad affair all around right there is no happiness to be had but that falls flat so what about the actual eating I mean, that's a cultural thing, right? There has been cannibals. Human cannibals in the past. I don't know if there has been as a delicacy. There's been a... Hmm, it's been a cultural thing. Right. Get the strength of your... Stuff like that. I mean, I guess it's a... Um, if we think about how the meat industry looks today, right? Well... Them being treated poorly. That's... But for the actual person to eat, to be the cannibal... I wonder... I wonder... Is this just dystopian? Is it possible? To eat the babies of the poor. Is it possible to build a society like that? No, I don't I don't think it is. I think that maybe you could culturally get people to eat children. Maybe that could be a thing. Right? Like people eating all kinds of stuff, right? People can be convinced, well, can be brought up to eat all kinds of, kinds of weird stuff. But I think that it's too on the nose, right? Eat the children of the poor, the poor will not stand for it. You have a revolution, you have a revolt on your hands. I don't think that culture is doable. And I think that is that is that is something we can can't get away from. Like it's a genetics thing. I think it's it's too ingrained in us to protect the children. Like from an evolutionary standpoint, it makes a lot of sense to protect the children and I think those instincts to protect the children are just too strong. Yeah, just too strong. I mean, humanity would have to change, like, evolutionary. We're talking thousands of generations before this. But that's, like, too far in the future and speculation to actual... Yeah, so I, I think it's... Yeah. But that's the whole point of the thing. So even if you could make the arguments... And that's what the focus is, right? To the rich to actually eat... That is maybe possible. Unless the protecting the children makes their stomach turn and makes it impossible to eat the children. That might be a case as well, right? It might be the case that, yeah, people just won't. Difficult to know.
So the argument, it's fairly simple to argument against it, because it's just a fantasy land. And that's the point of it, right? That it's just a fantasy... It's just a fantasy land. Just responds to diff specific political proposals, right? That followed this very same logic. And... Even though it might be a little bit straw manny, there is ideas following this very same logic. Objectivism being a very good example of this, right? From my understanding of objectivism anyway. All right, but that is it for a modest proposal. It went by, by faster than I thought it would, right? There isn't a lot to discuss, right? It is just a funny text and a good text, right? And there is a reason why it has survived as long as it has, right? It is a good counter, rhetorical counter to some sort of logic. And that's it. And it's funny. <laughs>